everyone, this is Dr. Salcedo, your conscious gynecologist. I'm so glad you're here. I'm sorry, it's been a little bit of a hiatus for me. Uh, my boys are in school, and so I've got a lot of focus on them when I'm off. And so now that they're back in school, I'm gonna go ahead and start pumping out some videos. There's been a lot of developments in gynecology recently as it relates to inflammation and metabolic health, and I'm so excited to share them with you. So let's get to it. If you're um, actually really interested in this, I would appreciate a like, I would appreciate a subscription, I would appreciate a comment. Tell me how this is affecting you. Um, but today our video is gonna be on endometriosis and the gut microbiome, but more importantly, five important nutritional things that ladies can do to go ahead and improve their endometriosis with a bonus at the end. And I just wanna say thank you so much. Um, I wanna share with you exactly what's been going on and a big win for me and all of us in gynecology. Uh, this is a paper that myself and Dr. Yoon and Abigail Rodriguez Shepard published recently in Primary Care Reports. And this is a journal, a practical journal for primary care doctors so that they can learn about different medical concerns and the specifics, and so they can help patients learn about all of the practical applications that we can do to improve women and their health. So this one is actually published this month, September of 2023, Primary Care Reports, and it's called Endometriosis and the Gut Microbiome Nutritional Prospects in Treatment of a Chronic disease. So that's what this video is about. I'm going to teach you about the nutritional prospects that I have gone, went ahead and researched thoroughly for you using the best available evidence for us um, so that I can share with you and other doctors about exactly the difficulties in treating endometriosis. Now, as you remember from my prior videos, endometriosis is likely a gut microbiome disorder. It is a disorder that through retrograde menstruation, so basically when we have our menstrual period, the blood goes not only down through the vagina from the opening of the cervix, but it also circulates retrograde backwards through the fallopian tubes and settles in the peritoneal cavity, which is the cavity that has all of our slippery organs and intestines and bladder and those implants stick to the peritoneal cavity and the reason why they stick to them and re-neovascularize is because the peritoneal cavity the lacy structure that is holding all of these organs are actually inflamed through something called gut dysbiosis okay and gut dysbiosis comes from the term of an imbalance of the helpful gut bacteria that's in our intestines. And those gut bacteria, viruses, fungi, protista, all of those things in our intestines are supposed to be there. They actually help our body create nutrients and vitamins for its normal processes. However, when there's a destabilization of those bacteria and that are helpful to us, then they allow unhelpful inflammatory factors to leak through the intestines, and that is called gut dysbiosis. And it's through gut dysbiosis that causes inflammation. That inflammation goes to the back of into the space between the rectum and the uterus. And that's where all that heavy pelvic pain exists. And that heavy pain and that inflammation is where our endometrial cells from retrograde menstruation stick to those areas and cause new blood supply between the lining of the uterus cells called endometrial cells and our pelvis and it's really discomforting so anyway going back to this article the one that i published with a couple of my co-workers really does help show 
five plus one very helpful nutritional things that we can do as women to help improve our struggles with endometriosis. And so let's get to it. Number one, the first thing that we can do to help people with endometriosis is introduction of probiotics. Probiotics are helpful bacteria that stabilize our intestinal flora, our intestinal microbiome, and it helps support them. In fact, there are several studies that show that when they supplemented women with lactobacillus probiotic supplements, they actually showed an improvement of their endometriosis symptoms. Now, I have no idea which probiotic that you like, and I'm not um, here to uh, support one versus the other, but anything that helps improve your, probio uh, your probiotic population. So even things that are um, pickled, you know, a lot of uh, preserved foods like kimchi and sauerkraut have wonderful probiotic helpful bacteria that help stabilize our gut. And so yes, probiotic number one. Second thing that is very helpful in endometriosis, um, and th these are nutritional things that we can do to help support us, is vitamin D. Now vitamin D, we can take as supplements and we also receive vitamin D outside in the sun. And those are really the big main places that we can get vitamin D. A lot of other things that we eat, like uh, milk is um, a lot of times fortified with vitamin D. That's because so many of us have a hard time actually getting it in its natural form from the sunlight. But that being said, vitamin D is a potent anti-inflammatory. That anti-inflammatory helps reduce a lot of the inflammatory molecules that are going to be constantly elevated. And when you have constant elevations and inflammation, there's more ability for endometriosis cells to revascularize into our pelvis. And so really great studies show that vitamin D supplementations really does reduce a lot of the pain and discomfort that women experience with endometriosis. So that's another one. It downregulates cytokines, those inflammatory molecules that worsen endometriosis development. The next one is something called vitamin A. And vitamin A is, of course, a lot of us think about vitamin A in terms of carrots and, um, and those kinds of, of, of common vegetables. Um, anything kind of orangey, mango, cantaloupe have a lot of vitamin A, but also other leafy greens have vitamin A, but also things who like to eat snout to tail. So um, there is a lot of vitamin A in beef liver and fish oil and those kinds of supplementations or food um, tendencies, people who like to eat snout to tail, really high levels of vitamin A. So what does vitamin A do? Well, vitamin A increases our bodies, our microbiome's ability to create a molecule called butyrate. And butyrate is a really fantastic uh, molecule that improves our barrier in our intestines. And so if we have a strong intestinal barrier, we have less chance to have that leakage of those inflammatory pathologic molecules. And so vitamin A is a building block for our microbiome to produce butyrate. And butyrate is a very important molecule in gut permeability. And so it reduces the ability of inflammation to get through the intestinal layer. And so vitamin A has also been shown when they've given it in supplement, supplement form to reduce the inflammation, inflammatory pain and symptoms related to endometriosis. The next one, number four, is omega-3 fatty acid, good old fish oil. And one of those omega-3 fatty acids as we know, reduces body inflammation at the level of the immune cell, at the level of the inflammatory cytokines that also is seen in vitamin D. Omega-3 fatty acid is found in so many of the foods that we used to eat ancestrally, lots of fishes and of course liver and all of the and eggs and so when we were an ancestral culture we lived along shorelines and riverbeds where we were able to receive a lot of these 
healthy omega-3 fish oils and that reduces the amount of inflammation in the same way that vitamin D does. And so when they actually supplemented women who had endometriosis with omega-3, it helped reduce a lot of their pain, but also um, really reduce the inflammation that is related to the revascularization of endometriosis in various parts of the body. We use vitamin or we use omega-3 in a lot of different things in medicine for pain, but it helps a ton with endometriosis. The next one is trans fat intake. So trans fat is one of those shelf stable fats that were created, gosh, over a hundred years ago in order to really cause stability for a lot of shelf foods. And we find it in lots of processed foods, in the oils that um, um, stabilize certain foods. Um, you know, Crisco comes to mind, uh, French fried seed oils, all of those trans fat are very inflammatory and they're pro-inflammatory leading to the, a lot of the inflammation that a lot of ladies with endometriosis tend to struggle with. And so when they saw that women who actually um, had the highest quartile of trans fat consumption in the nurse's health study, they were 48% more likely to struggle with endometriosis. And the, this has been shown time and time again. And the unfortunate thing about trans fats is that they're so common in our diet and we really try to reduce our processed food intake where there's lots of trans fat. So finally, what we also notice as the bonus is that to reduce a lot of these inflammatory players to have a diet that is more whole food based something that has a lot of vitamin a a lot of omega-3 is truly just therapeutic carbohydrate restriction in order to remove so many of those inflammatory players and that's the bonus in terms of how we like to manage people in my practice and how i like to really help women reduce inflammation Typically, a diet base that's low in carbohydrate, high in healthy fat is really the way to go. It really does help reduce things on a granular level, reduces lots of inflammation. So if you found this helpful, I think this is something that we can all benefit from. You can check out and do a Google search on that paper. I'll post a link on it in my, um, in my show comments. Um, check, out the, uh, check out the paper, send it to your primary care doctor, see what they think, tell me what you think on the, um, on the comments. And if you really liked this, please give me a like, please give me a subscription. Um, it's gonna help a ton of other women have the bandwidth uh, so that they, my uh, videos can help other ladies um, as we struggle through these gynecologic disorders. So thank you so much and I can't wait to share the next video.